I've invited today uh, Janice Barron, who specializes as an educational consultant, and her knowledge of all the various schools and programs that the different towns have to offer is such an invaluable tool that we have invited her to partner with our staff and be available for any new families moving into the area that may be uncertain about what schools, what areas, what programs may be the best fit for their children. Good morning, Janice. Good morning, William. Thanks for coming back into my life. It's a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> We've known each other for many years and we've recently reconnected and I really see the benefit that you have um, offered some of our clients mm -hmm. in helping them decide which area of the various towns they would really want to move to. Can you tell us a little bit about your background in education? Of course, okay. Well, I would have to say it began in my own home because as these parents who are looking for the right educational setting for their children know, it's, it starts there. And so with my mother who posted quotes and put uh, If by Rudyard Kipling on the wall, it was always apparent to me that education was important. So I, of course, went on to my college career and ended up in New England, and I first began teaching in the Andover Public Schools. Um, so long ago that many of my students bring their children to the summer program I now run. And that's the Kaleidoscope? That's the Kaleidoscope, and then also the Kite, Kite program. program. So I worked in the Andover Schools, and at that time there was a gifted and talented program that was begun, and I was asked to direct it. So I became very involved in gifted education, uh, looking at all the different, uh, let's say, multiple intelligences that kids have. Um, so I was, uh, began to do some consulting work in that area. Um, and that kind of led me into my role as a staff development consultant. And I've done that for many, many years in many, many school districts at all different uh, subjects and grade levels, working with teachers. So that was okay. extremely rewarding, being able to train teachers. And I drew many of those to the summer program Kaleidoscope that draws kids from 40 different towns. I was also the That's principal. amazing. You know, principal of a private school. So I've been involved with public and private schools, uh, both as a parent, as a teacher, as an administrator, um, and I do a lot of coaching of teachers. So it's, it's just part and parcel of who I am, I guess, is to be involved with schools and kids. We, uh, we're so lucky to have you locally to assist us with, um, with the educational questions that every parent seems to have. Absolutely. Um, one of the things that always amazes me is that when somebody new comes into town, they've spoken to somebody and, mm -hmm. and they'll say, well, this is the best part of town or this is the better school than that school, when in fact that might not be the case. Tell me a little bit about the support that you can provide and in, in are providing to our real estate clients. Okay. Well, I want to go back to what you just said about the best. Yes. Okay. Because people would often ask me, I get a lot of calls from parents, many who move into in Massachusetts from other states as well as locally and they want to know what's the best setting for their child and it it's just that specific if you don't know who that child is yes. you can't make that judgment so when a parent hears oh this is the best school it's the best for the child whose parent is telling you it's the best school do you know what I mean understandably and I also feel that um, parents really need to be cautious about Looking at data, even though data is important, data can be very misleading. I think that's where I can help kind of interpret that data and really look at it in a broader way. Um, and also be aware of what resources are out there beyond the school setting itself, because no school's perfect. No school's going to provide everything for a child. You know, people can think, well, this school's going to be the best school because that's what everyone says. And there could be a change in administration, there could be changes in staff, and things can change pretty dramatically. Makes sense. So it's important to be looking at the big picture. And I think because I've been so deeply enmeshed in this for so long, I, I believe I have the skill to look through a lot of the um, decorations you sure. know, and get to the essence. But it really starts with finding out who that child is. So in the most recent Absolutely. consultation, I spent the first 40 minutes just learning about the child at the center of this quest because that makes all the difference. It really yeah. does and what I find is um, the client will go on different websites mm -hmm. and they'll just look at test scores mm -hmm. 
I know growing up that I was an A student, but I had to work very hard at it, and I was a very difficult, testing for me was very difficult. Mm -hmm. So my test scores may not have been the best, but I studied very hard, and I think I got a terrific education. But as you say, it's dependent on the child. How much time would you need for an initial consultation? Well, generally, I, I feel that I need an hour to two okay. to really sit down with the family and understand who the child is and also the family's picture. Sure. And that's something that I really look at in these situations. You know, uh, when I bought my first home, I didn't have any children. But even then, in the back of my mind was the what if. Sure. So kids are always a part of that picture. Yes. And I think that it's important to be able to sit back and say, do the parents work? Where do they work? How much stress are they going to be under by this decision? You know, yes, you want the best for your child, but what's best for the family is going to be what's best for the child. Sure. So, you know, I think that a home is a sanctuary. It is. I think that the people I just met with, I said, you want to come home every day from your work and you know, your child's in school and you're working and you're under certain degrees of stress, you should come home and be thrilled to walk through that door. That should be Great your happy, point. safe place. You know? Great point, because that stress, in the car, driving an hour, an hour there, an hour home, that certainly is going to wear off onto the child. Exactly. And affect exactly. that child's day in yeah. school. There's no way around it. And I think that that's another aspect that I, I feel is important in my role is to connect and network. Yes, You know, exactly. if I know a teacher at this school, if I know, and I know parents, you know, through my summer program, 750 kids are there every summer. I know lots of parents. And those parents are usually very willing to talk to prospective yes. buyers. And, and I think that um, that's really important to have other people to talk to and not the posts online. Right. Because most people don't go online to say how wonderful something was. They and so on, you're getting a skewered view. Yeah. I used to tell the parents in my school when I was principal, promise me one thing, don't listen to what you hear at birthday parties. Uh, yeah. Very good advice. Don't listen to it. If anything sounds strange, call me. At least give me the courtesy of, of verifying whether this is true or not before it takes on a life of its own. And, That's a, and a lot of that is out there. And it's, yes. I think it's very intimidating for someone to not be able to process that you know, in the right way. Terrific. So. Janice, just to wrap this up, is there any general advice, just overall advice, that you would have for home buyers who are concerned about um, educational opportunities for their children? Well, I think first is what we, yes. the thing we just mentioned, which is mm -hmm. be really wary of these, the negative press. Yes. You know, and, and try to talk to people who have inside knowledge yes. of, of what you've read about. You know, people yes. who actually have been there, done that, you know. Um, I also think the important thing, the general advice I always give is really consider this is a family decision. As much as, you know, as parents, we want to put bubble wrap around our children, you know, exactly. and we want them to have nothing but the best. Yes. All right? And we would just sacrifice so much for our kids to have a shot and a good life. But it's all dependent on the parents and their happiness and their success. And so I think that you almost need to step back a little bit and say, okay, we're doing this as a family decision and we're going to consider our child's needs. But if you go in, I think, with the idea that you've got to put them above and beyond everything else, yes, I don't think you'll have the result that you want. That's, again, a personal and, opinion. That's a, great, that's a yeah. great point. Well, one of the other things I did want to mention, Lillian, is that Children vary so much, yes, they and do. that when someone comes to talk to me about their child and the school that would be good for their child, or the district, or any of those things, I would be asking questions like, does your child have a special need? Does your child have an academic gift? Does your child have a specific talent, be it music, art, theater? You know, are there emotional concerns that you have for your child? Because all of these paint a portrait of the child and enable me to better guide and su make suggestions and develop, let's say, a plan with resources that this parent could access. Terrific. Okay. And you know, it's like uh, a family with two or three children. Right. Two children are, they're never the same. Exactly. So that certainly makes a lot of sense. Exactly. And just one last thing, um, congratulations. This is your 40th anniversary yeah. of Kaleidoscope. Mm -hmm. And could you just speak for uh, a moment on the difference between the Kaleidoscope program and the KITE program? Sure. 
So one of the things I didn't mention in terms of my, my experience and work right now is that I'm on the board of an organization called MAGE, which is the Massachusetts Association for Gifted Education. And um, I've been involved in that field for many years. And so the KITE program is geared specifically for advanced learners, mm -hmm. above grade level learners, kids who are highly motivated, who are creative and love to learn. And oftentimes they're the ones in the school who are saying, I'm done, what do I do now? And the teachers are, you know. Sure. So I'm the one who trains teachers to know what to do with these kids when they say those words. Um, so the KITE program is really a faster paced. Sure. Um, it's not. Uh, geared to any of the curriculum that's covered in the, in the regular schools Wonderful. so that these kids come home learning something new each day. So it's a more specific population. We, Kaleidoscope's open to all kids, it, you know, kids who have interest in archaeology or in the STEM classes or music or whatever it might be, theater, uh, beginning at age three up to about wow. 13. But some kids go to both. They'll go to Kaleidoscope for those interesting topics and sure. then they'll be eligible for Kite. And some kids only come to kite, and they'll come from 40 different towns. That is know, amazing. And because it's, it's a unique program, there aren't many programs um, like that that really are geared toward that population of really eager learners, you know, capable of moving faster. Wow. Um, I'll tell you, you yeah. uh, never cease to amaze me, and wow. uh, I'm so delighted that uh, you're part of our team, and if anybody uh, has well. any questions, I will be delighted to uh, to provide your information. Yeah, and I just yeah. want to let um, whoever's watching this, our audience, I'd like to let you know that we have um, this year's brochures for the upcoming year for the Kaleidoscope program and yeah. Kite. Yeah. And again, thank you so much for spending uh, this time. It's my pleasure. Look forward to it.